Hi guys, my name is Matt Garvey. We are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the mistakes that new writers tend to make when they're writing their first comics. Okay, so today's video is all about mistakes. As a new comic writer, you are going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes, we all do it. There's no shame in it. It's all part of the process. We just need to make sure that we learn from these and don't repeat them. And you know, there are some common mistakes that we do. And I thought if I point these out to you guys now, hopefully your comic making journey will be a lot quicker than mine if you can you know, bypass them. So these are some of the mistakes that usually happen when someone writes their first comics. Okay, so first up is going too big too soon. I did an entire video about this subject last week, so I'll put a link in the description so I don't have to go through every detail that I did again because I don't want to bore you guys. Too late. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, what it is is when a new comic writer has never written anything before and they decide to tackle a really big project, you know, like a graphic novel, you know, or in a four issue mini series before they've mastered the fundamentals of writing a comic book script. You need to start small, start with smaller scripts and you work your way up to your magnum opus. So I'm gonna say it once more, start small. Next up is way too much dialogue on the page. I'm gonna cover dialogue in a future video coming very soon where I'm gonna share some tips and show you how to make your dialogue sound more natural. But for this example, I wanted to just mention it so you can start thinking about it now. Now it's not just new writers that make this mistake, even seasoned professionals from other mediums that have moved over into comics, you know, they still make this mistake as well. For those of you that know me outside the channel on you know on Twitter and stuff like that, you'll know that I'm a huge Daredevil fan, and as well as being a huge Daredevil fan, I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith. He's one of my favourite people in the world. So when you know Silent Bob got himself lined up to reboot Old Hornhead with Joe Casada and Jimmy Palmiart in the late nineties, I was foaming at the mouth. But and this is not me poo-pooing Kevin because as I said, I'm a huge fan of, of, of his work and this is still one of my favourite Daredevil comics of all time. But as you can see, he is guilty of putting way too much dialogue on the page. And if you've ever listened to, you know, his Fat Man on Batman podcast, you know, now Fat Man Beyond, he makes jokes all the time that Joe Cassard used to bust his chops about not leaving him any room to draw the pictures on the page. So as you can see, seasoned professionals, you know, make this mistake too. So try and avoid this if you can. And, you know, if you've never read Guardian Devil, you are missing out. I'd highly recommend it. Track it down, pick it up. It's such a good Daredevil book. Next up, we have way too many splash pages. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a splash page, even a double splash page, but my personal opinion, and you may disagree with me on this, but any more than two splash pages in a 24 page comic, I personally think is overkill. So if you find yourself writing more than two, I would relook at your plot, you know, try and add another scene in there, you know, because remember, Splash pages are there for impact, you know, they're for like a massive punch within a fight scene or a twist or a shock. So the more you use, the less dramatic those splash pages are going to be. That is, of course, unless you're Dan Jurgens doing, you know, the Death of Superman where every page is a splash page, but that's a one time thing. So no more than two. On the flip side of that, we have way too many panels on the page as well. And don't get me wrong, there are some great comics there. They're like Watchmen or Mr. Miracle that I keep going on about that do like a nine panel page, you know, really, really well. Even I've done it in one of my comics, Chunks, but I'm starting to see more and more scripts from new writers where they're putting eight, 10, 14 panels on a page. And I can just hear and see their artist collaborator just go, because they always put so much detail in all these panels and you're not leaving your artist collaborator room to draw them. So. My advice to you is if you're starting out, no more than between four and six panels on a page, you'll be happy, your collaborator will be happy, and the comic will look a lot better, I promise you. As you get better, you know, you can put these, you know, 14 panel pages in because when you see these panels, these pages in comics that have all these panels, it's done for a reason. It's done for a creative reason where you see like the panels like floating around the page and stuff like that. But at the moment, you need to concentrate on the fundamentals and telling a coherent story, you know, from panel to panel. So keep it simple, four to six, that's all you need to do. 
So next up is the cardinal sin. If you do this, your artist collaborator is going to shout at you. And you know what? They have every right to shout at you for doing this because when I see this in a script, it makes my head want to explode as well. And this is what I like to call the and then mistake. And what I mean by this is, is when an inexperienced writer will write more than one single action within a panel of a comic. So a great example of this, someone gave me online on Twitter the other day because I put out you know, what were your pet peeves to, to artists? And this came back and forgive me, I forgot which artist told me this example, but it was a great way of describing it and I'm going to use it. If it was you, let me know in the comments section and, you know, I'll give you a shout out in the next video to say thank you. Um, but the description he gave me is, he recently received a script from a writer and this was one single panel. This was the description. It was, character walks into the kitchen, um, character makes a cup of coffee, character sits down, Character takes a sip of the cup of coffee. Character smiles and says something nice about the coffee that he just drunk. That's not one panel. That's five separate actions. That's a page, guys. So what I tend to do is, as a rule, is when you're writing your panel descriptions, as soon as you even think about writing the words, and then it's a new panel. End of story no deviation, as soon as you write, and then new panel, because it's a different action, and different actions go into different panels. And if you're having trouble doing this, you need to go back to your plot, look at the way you've plotted your comic, and look how you're breaking down those pages that we did in the other video that I'll put a link to, you know, of how you're setting that page up for the artist, because if you do this, we're all gonna hate you. So don't do it, okay? Don't. As I said, I put this question out into the Twitter sphere the other day to some of my artist buddies on there, you know, to see what their pet peeves were when they got a script back, you know, and I got some really nice, you know, um, ones that I didn't think of that, that came back, you know. One great example of this was from Mr. Mark Lamin. If you don't know who Mark is, do you know what? Go and follow him on Twitter because not only is he one of the nicest guys in comics that I've ever had the privilege to meet, he's super talented. You know, he's done work, you know, for Marvel and Star Wars and he's, you know, he's currently killing it, you know, on Bloodshot for Valiant with Tim Seeley. And, you know, I'll put a link into his description, you know, for some of his books, you know, support Mark and his work because he is awesome. You know, he gave a great, great example where he said it'd be helpful if a writer would put at the top of each page how many panels are going to be on that page. This is something that I don't do, but this is something that I'm going to do now. So that is a great, great, great one too. He also put, you know, when you talk to your artist, talk to them, you know, as part of the team, not just as a, a hired wrist, as, as, as he put it. And I'll be honest with you, if you are speaking to any of your collaborators other than respectful and, you know, as, as a team member, you don't deserve to work in comics or write comics because without, you know, the artists, the inkers, the, you know, the colorists, the letterers, the editors, without, you know, your team, all you have are words on the page. So treat everybody respectfully, okay? So yes, 100% with you on that one, Mark. Another great example was from another artist buddy of mine from Twitter, a chap called PJ Holden. Again, if you don't follow him, super nice, super talented, you know, he's done stuff for 2000 AD, has done like number cruncher for, for Titan and stuff like that. I'll put a link in the description. He gave a great example of something that I talked about in my script writing video a couple of videos back, which I'll put a link for in the description of that. And he said, you know, if a character is carrying a laptop on page nine of your script, you need to make sure you tell the artist where that laptop was first seen. So if that character was meant to be carrying it on page two, tell them. Because if an artist doesn't know to draw something, you can't get angry at them for not drawing it because you've not made it clear. And in my script writing video, a couple of videos back, I mentioned anything important that you're gonna refer back to or forward to in your script, put it in red. So it's important. So your artist collaborator knows that that has to be in that script. Because as I keep saying, if it's not in the script, they won't know to draw it and you can't get angry at them. So it's all on you. So important stuff, red, script, make sure it gets done, okay? And a pet peeve that came up time and time again was script formatting. And I know in my script writing video, I said that there's no right way and no wrong way to write a comic book script. But what you tend to find is, you know, most comic writers tend to use the same kind of format when they're producing their comic scripts that are clear and concise. So, you know, an artist can, you know, take their words and put them into pictures perfectly try and emulate that as much as you can. You know, I've shown you how I do it and I've given you examples of other professionals, you know. So work on your script format, make sure it's clear to help your artist collaborator out and it's gonna make your comics a lot better, okay? And that's another video done, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found that interesting and useful. If you have, 
give us a thumbs up, leave a nice comment in the comment section and all that jazz, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Um, I will see you in the next video and I'm gonna keep saying this every, every video until you believe in yourself and believe you can do it. If I can make comics, anyone can. You can make comics, so go and make comics. Take care.